Timmy the trash can, and I love trash. Popcorn boxes, cups, and candy wrappers. Mmm, they all taste so good. Instead of throwing your trash on the floor, won't you please give it to me? Thank you for considering your fellow patrons. Uh, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show, everybody. This is Tim Dillon. We're joined, as always, or usually, by the great Devin Costa. What's up, Tim? Thank you for coming to San Diego, where I am having a great weekend here at American Comedy Company in San Diego, uh, a city of very attractive, if uh, a little bit retarded people. They are very attractive, and the shows have been excellent. People have been coming out. And we're having a lot of fun. And actually, they're not that stupid. I mean, they're probably stupid, but not in the club. They've been getting all the jokes. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm 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 pumped about that. Thank God. I had a friend and I was like, you know, some of the people, you know, San Diego is not the brightest city, you know. And my friend's like, you know, working out and being healthy. That's also that's a different kind of intelligence. And I'm like, I know that dummy. What I'm saying is that that doesn't help me if I'm making fucking jokes with references that people don't understand. Right. That's the problem. I'm not saying that fucking following, you know, a rigid keto diet isn't some evidence of intelligence and reason. I get that. Okay. I'm with you. (laughs) All right. I'm not taking away all their fucking accomplishments. I get that discipline requires some level of mental dexterity. I'm with you. I'm saying that if I make a joke about something and you stare at me like you're brain dead, I don't care how good you look. It doesn't really help. Have you, did you, when you were doing stand up, did you ever come down here? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. It's kind of the place to go for stage time in LA. And how did you find it? I didn't like it. Why did you not like it? They're like what you're saying. They're kind of dumb people. You gotta, you gotta, they want crowd work and like talk about how drunk people are, right? And that type of shit. Kind of a daft crowd. But there's something nice about the city here because they don't. I, I haven't seen any of these pseudo intellectual pretend artist types. No, that is nice. Yeah, they don't have any of that. It's fucking military, athletic people. You know, they got the life here. They're yeah. not. They're not trying to worry about any nonsense. Yeah, you know, some real bar fights here. People beating each other's brains out, just fucking like animals. This yeah. is the way, and I say it on stage. This is the way to experience the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Hot on a beach, fucking. Yep. Because New York and places like New York and L.A., they're all going to be trying to solve the problem. You know, they're going to die saying, "Actually, I'm right." Like. That'll be the last words they say. <laughs> right. They'll be like, no, actually. And then, you know, it'll all end. Yeah. But here in San Diego, the last thing you'll hear is like, oh, ah, <laughs> they'll just be coming. And yeah, people in San Diego look like they fuck with their tongues out. Oh, yeah. You know, man. Like extreme people. There's some really attractive people so, in the city. Yeah, very hot. I went down to Seal Cove the other day, which is a, a, a beach where they've where there's a lot of seals and sea lions and the tourists, Americans go visit uh, the sea lions to feel better about their own weight, which I think (laughs) is very nice of San Diego to have a place where Americans can walk out on the beach and go, see, I'm not that fat. Look at that 1800 pound sea lion. Uh, The sea lions are of course, usually much better looking than the Americans because they carry their weight better. That's just a fact. That's a reality. Yeah. There's a lot of fat. You know how fat people are when you're down on the beach and and next to the 2,000 pound sea lion, they look fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? They look like I'm like, what animal could I put next to you that would dwarf you? And sl- like, we need a, a hippopotamus. <laughs> we need a rhinoceros. Like, there's a 2,000 pound sea lion. These people aren't scared at all. They're walking up to these things, you know, smacking them in the face. <laughs> what up, bitch? You know, <laughs> he's getting a- on their backs, <laughs> riding them around. I'm kidding. They're not doing any of that. But supposedly at night, I was talking to some guy drunk. High school girls from La Jolla run down to the beach or college girls or whatever. And they just like cradle the sea lions. They're all hammered. They're like, come here, baby. Mm-hmm. I love you. And then every now and then a sea, lo- a sea lion takes a bite out of their arm. 
Yeah, all for an Instagram picture. Yeah, all some for a, selfie. All for a selfie. I like that you said at breakfast. You said, uh, you said, what was it? Their first. What did you say? How did you phrase it? Uh, their their first. Uh, their first. What was it? I don't. Re- I don't even remember things I say. I don't, I don't know. It was about the sea lions and the. This is why he doesn't talk more. You know, people <laughs> people say to me they're like, "Why doesn't he talk more?" I'm like, "He does. He's like, he kind of has Alzheimer's." He said. That, no, it was like their first lesson they learned was a sea lion biting them. Oh, but right. You said it in a very funny way and you well, forgot. Yeah, I'm well, sorry about that. It's okay. It's all right. It's, <laughs> it's not me. They'll, they'll still like me. Um, it's, you know, we're trying to have you, trying to build your fan base here. <laughs> but you said something very funny at break. That is the curse of some people say something very funny and then if cameras go on or recording devices go on, they completely do not have it anymore. There are people that I've seen kill on shows and then they'll go to a festival like JFL or they'll do Conan or something. And then as soon as it matters, not that this matters, but as soon as like anything matters, they're just, they're like, they just walk out and they're like, and they just have nothing. And Mm -hmm. then they fail and they, and they, and they leave. (laughs) No, they don't leave. They stay, but they never quite get it. Um, I will say I, 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 I had to end a friendship recently with somebody who I could see was going insane. It's very important to spot, people on their journey to insanity and then throw them out of your life before they officially arrive in the (laughs) insane asylum. And you could see them, you could see it happening to a lot of people. And there's a lot of like different indications they give. One of the indications was a friend of mine recently was telling me that they needed an assistant, but they didn't have a job. They had no job. They they spend all day doing nothing, mm-hmm. but they need an assistant. That's like, that's one of those fucking indications that somebody's about to lose their fucking mind. And they had to go. And then they asked about Ben, who produces the show. They're like, is Ben your assistant? Will Ben schedule like furniture deliveries to your house? I'm like, what? Furniture? Who's having furniture delivered? <laughs> you don't have a job. You're not doing it like these people aren't doing anything. And you realize, oh, they're starting to lose touch with reality. They're like, it's like, you know how you dip your toe in the pool. They're dipping their toe into outer space and they're seeing how it feels without gravity. And they like it. They're like, oh, it feels nice without gravity. And so in order to do that, you need to assemble a group of people around you that won't question any of these things and go, you do need an assistant. You need a team, really. Mm -hmm. Really, you need a team. And they're like, you're right. I need a team. But unfortunately, this person had to go. And it is uh, it is unfortunate. I, 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 I try to surround myself with rich people. But a lot of the problem is if they're very, if they're, there's nothing worse than a rich person who hasn't accepted they're rich mm-hmm. and then tries to be smart. This is, this is of the archetypes of human being that absolutely need to be caught in a riptide. You know, yeah. it is. This is one of the archetypes, a person who's guilty about their amount of privilege that they have money. So what they then have tried to do is become like an artist or become intelligent. Mm-hmm. And every interaction they have with the world is just this insufferable need to feel smart and to be recognized for their intelligence. But they also like shoes like it's that type of person. They're like, I'm a genius, but I also love sneakers. That's a new archetype of human being, by the way. They're like, I love revolution and I'm a very, you know, I'm a, I'm a real, uh, I'm a thinker and I realize that society's fucked, but I also love sneakers and that I have those two parts of my personality that are constantly, you know, I love jackets and fashion and also, you know, I'm a genius. You know, it's just both of those things that you get. Yeah. And it's utterly. So I had to get. Have you ever torched a friendship and then not regretted that you're not friends with the person, but regretted the way that you did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're impulsive. Like, say something real, you know, like a headshot. I mean, you feel kind of bad about it, but you're probably on your way to not being friends anyway. I felt bad that I said a few things that I should not have said. But I think sometimes in this society, honesty is is people recognize honesty as an attack, especially when it is worded like an attack. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but I do think that people, 
you know, to be an honest person is, I hate to say it, but it is kind of revolutionary in, in a city like Los Angeles where many of the people you're dealing with are mentally ill. They're insane. So for you to say something that's based in reality throws them, you know, for a loop and then they're angry at you. They're mad at you. They're mad if you suggest something that's reality based. Right. If you suggest a solution that's based in, you know, any type of reason or, you know, I mean, people just look at you like you're a dick. They're like, that guy sucks. You know, that guy's a bad person because he chose to puncture, you know, this little bubble of insanity that I've built that I, I cannot have punctured. I just have to. Mm -hmm. But I did feel bad because I said a few things that I regret. And I think that's what happens, unfortunately, when you let stuff build up. You know, I think that's what happened with OJ. I think it's what happened with a lot of people that should have addressed those issues earlier and did not <laughs> But why is OJ the most well-adjusted person on Twitter? Why is he looks good, <laughs> plays golf, seems happy, has pretty decent stuff to say about the Democratic debates? has pretty good analysis. Why is that? Because he can't, and he did, you know, he's had a wild life. Yeah. Think about OJ's life and think about Donald Trump's life, right? These guys have had wild lives. OJ was, was a star running back, movie star, mm -hmm. maybe murderer, maybe. got away with murder. He was like the toast of LA society. Got away with murder. Ended up going to jail for, like, stealing... What did he do? He stole his memorabilia back from a guy that was selling his memorabilia. And now he's out. He's in, you know, the golden years of his life. He's playing golf. He looks good. He's, you know... He's free. He's got nothing to hide anymore. He's free. He's got nothing to hide. I mean, all in all, let's be honest. Is it a bad life? Let's be honest. Look at O.J. Simpson's life. He's experienced everything. He's really experienced everything. Everything that you, the highs, the lows. Yeah. You know, he cut off someone's head almost. <laughs> he near, he nearly decapitated somebody that he did not like, that he was angry at. Many of us, when you're angry, what do you do? You got to shove it deep down because you don't want to get fired. Some cunt walks into fucking Starbucks or wherever you're working, starts being demanding, and you want to throw hot coffee in her face. You want to scold her. You want to just see her, you know, collapse like the witch in The Wizard of Oz. I'm melting. I'm melting. But she's not melting. She's burning because you threw coffee on her and she's got at least second degree burns on her face and she's screaming and her child is there. But her child isn't crying because the child is actually also kind of happy that the mother got it. and The child is kind of has that quizzical look on its face. Like, is this justice I'm witnessing? Is this my first? Is this my first experience with divine justice? This guy that just threw hot coffee in my bitch mother's face. But you can't do that, right? So you stuff it down and then you drink, you smoke, you do whatever. People, you know, you eat unhealthy um, and you stuff it down, you stuff it down, you stuff it down. OJ walked in. He saw something going on mm -hmm. that he was not a fan of. And he made the choice to not stuff it down. <laughs> he made the choice to take action. And listen, I don't know Nicole Brown Simpson. I, I did not know her. I did not know Ron Goldman. I was a child and I lived in New York. Um, and I, I, I do not condone murder. I want to say that because I think a lot of people listening right now are confused. And that's fine because... <laughs> Life is confusing. I think many people are starting to realize that, that these absolutes are not really serving us, to be honest. And I think we need to start reexamining these situations. Mm -hmm. But what OJ did probably felt really good in the moment. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. It probably felt really good in the moment to cut off their heads. Yeah. Now, immediately after, he probably was like, well, that was a lot. You know, yeah, like yeah, that was too much. felt a little bad, you know, but and ending he had the to friendship. Go. Well, then, then you know, you you start thinking about self preservation, and but what I'm saying is, let's just look at the life. Let's not focus in on any part of his life. Let's just let's let's focus out and go. What a life! When he's on his deathbed, 
he could say, I've done it all. I got away with murder. I was a movie star. I was the toast of the town. Mm -hmm. I mean. He's a remarkable figure. I got to be honest with you. I don't want to use the word hero. (laughs) Because it is. And don't stop with the violence against women shit. He killed a guy, too. Don't start with me with this. He killed a woman. What about Ron Goldman? Yeah. You look at Donald Trump. Crazy life. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. Been at the apex of a certain type of society. He was never like in the inner sanctum of New York society, but close enough. He was that new 80s, you know, uh, you know, billionaire, mega, you know, you know, a business magnet that courted fame you know, like a wrestling heel, I think owned the Miss Universe pageant. Was it Miss Universe? Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I think Miss Universe owned multiple casinos. Uh, I mean, a, a truly extraordinary life. And again, the pre- and now the president of the United States, it, this isn't good or bad. We're not more, I'm not looking at the morals of any of these situations. I'm just zooming out and I'm going, Compared to the experiences that most people have on Earth, okay, Mm -hmm. if you were to have a museum of great lives, and I don't mean great in the sense of like they dedicated their lives to making the world a better place, but just great lives like where you you look at their life and go, oh, shit. That's awesome. Donald Trump, OJ Simpson, people like Cardi B, Mm -hmm. who was a fucking stripper who was drugging people in Miami. Some fucking guy that looked like me in a hotel room exactly (laughs) like this, waking up going, where the fuck's my fucking gold card? You know, and Cardi B was fucking cutting lines with it by the pool. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, she's, you know, has had the number one song. I mean, these are wild lives. Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. You want to talk about a life? Let's talk about a life for a minute. Okay. Ran an international Sex trafficking ring, a minor for children, you know, not for children. <laughs> he was four children. He was not for children. <laughs> With children, he ran an international pedophile ring, sex trafficking ring, and he had some of the most fi- wealthy, you know, famous and wealthy people. The guy had multiple residences, multiple properties, had connections, had access, maybe worked for the CIA or the Mossad. Nobody knows. I will I will say this about Epstein, though. What I will say is like all you idiots that are like, oh, you, we worked for the Mossad. Yeah, it's very possible he worked for the Mossad. But are you telling me, and the, you know, the Observer wrote some article about this where they're like, well, you know, I bet it's, uh, you know, CIA wouldn't tolerate this. He's, he's working. He was a spy, but we don't know what, you know, who he was spying for. We don't know who he was spying for. So you're telling me, you're telling me the Jeffrey Epstein is compromising high level U.S. politicians, people from all over the world. He's working with the Mossad and the CIA has no fucking clue. A bunch of fat guys in Ohio with Wi-Fi who can get on Reddit seem to have a pretty good idea. But the Central <laughs> Intelligence Agency has just got no fucking idea of what Jeffrey Epstein is doing. How stupid do you have to be to believe that? You know, anything to let this country off the hook, mm-hmm. anything any logical job, these people will jump through fucking hoops to just let this country off the hook and go, well, no, this is this not, uh, it's not our intelligence people. Mm-hmm. Our intelligence people are saving us from bad guys all over the world. They're not participating in this. They wouldn't dare. I mean, but that's the thing, man. I, I, I was I regret what I said. It was unfortunate. You gotta move on. You gotta get rid of friends. You gotta get rid of close friends. You have to cancel your friends and family. It's so easy to cancel a stranger. So many people are like, oh, let's cancel this celebrity. You know? Let's how about how about no, cancel your father. How about that? <laughs> okay? You wanna be a tough guy? Cancel someone you love and you care about, but you realize they're not loving and serving you. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. You need people in your life that love you, but are also willing to serve you. 
Do you think I'm wrong about that? No, no. I mean, it's it's funny to just say out loud, you know. I don't know why it's funny to say out loud. I think because people, a lot of people believe truly that they are worth nothing and they're correct. And those people are, you know, people are, they have a slave mentality, you know? Uh, that That's why, like, I, I believe we should all have health insurance. But the reason I don't get on board with socialism is because, like, I look at people out there and I go, I don't really want to be associated with a lot of them. I feel like a lot of them shouldn't be here, but they are. And I don't mean in America. I mean on Earth. And I just, I believe we should all have health insurance. I think we should all have some kind of social safety net. But I don't, I don't like collectivism. I don't embrace collectivism because I feel like many of the people on the planet simply shouldn't be. They're accidents. They're, they're biological accidents that are here. They're breathing and they're taking up space. And they're consuming resources. But what do they generate? They're not generating anything, you know, and then people say, oh, that's inhuman, blah, blah, blah. Oh, go scratch. You know, it, it, it just we need to go back to the times of radical individualism where the way I feel radical individualism is a concept where you would radically be an individual. And. It would it, if you're really being an individual, you won't have a lot of friends. Your social circle will shrink if you start doing and saying the things you want. Don't worry. You will not get invited to places if you just put it out there. Now, the more and more you keep it in and you bottle it in, the more and more people are going to have you come because they want you to sit around and be like, oh, why don't you, you go to Anguilla? Did you go to Anguilla? It was so nice. I like. But if you go out there and you 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 say things like, you know, why can't I fuck my cousin? Or you say things like, you know, I I don't I don't know why, but there's something comforting about OJ. There's something in his eyes that feels at peace. If you say that in mixed company, OJ's eyes are at peace. When you look at him, he feels like he's at peace. If you say things like that, the invitations are gonna dry up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to go along with everyone's horse shit. Find somebody to fuck, get a pet, have a friend or two, and then move the fuck on. Enough. Enough with cocktails after work. Nobody needs that. Sitting around with a bunch of people. Get out. Get away. Leave society. And I think... I, I believe this is a message that many people don't because everything is collective now. Everything's based on like, and but nobody really feels that way. Everybody's pretending to care about other people, but nobody really does in their life because they all go on Twitter and talk about how important it is that everybody has health care. But then they, 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 their parents are rotting in some, you know, mm -hmm. some home or they haven't called their brother in eight months or they don't really give a shit about their nephews or nieces or, they're barely good to the people that live in the, you know, live in their surrounding area, their neighbors. They just, they don't care, but they, they put on this idea that they give a fuck about other people. No, I think it is very empowering and liberating to get out there and say, I believe that we shouldn't be fucked by these large corporations. We should have, you know, kids should have food, you know, they should, not a lot of it. Not too much. Yeah. I mean, it's real. The right amount. Yeah. You give a, you give them a nutritious meal. They'd still be hungry. Here's the thing with all these kids that are hungry. If you gave them a nutritious meal, they'd still be hungry. Like if you gave a kid vegetables and a meat, they 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 would still go to bed hungry with a headache, like I do, because they don't they didn't get to have a, a whole cupcake the size of a basketball, because <laughs> that's what they're all used to. <laughs> a lot of these kids are just used to eating fucking fun dip. And, you know, ketchup milkshakes. And then remember <laughs> Michelle Obama? Michelle Obama tried to get these kids to eat healthy. There was a literal riot. There was a riot because she's like, how about you eat healthy? And then because kids start going insane because food and uh, addiction to sugar, which a lot of people in this country have. I have it. If I don't have sugar, and this is why I'm trying to cut it out, but I get headaches. I start getting angry at people irrationally. I should getting angry at people that I haven't seen in forever. I just, I start wishing horrible things happen to them. Ending friendships. Yes, but I also like, I'll lay in bed sometimes and I'll, I'll imagine someone getting killed. 
I'll imagine all the different ways that someone could die. And it's all, and then I'll have a slice of uh, flourless chocolate cake and I'll go, oh, that guy's not a bad guy. Really? He's not that bad of a guy. <laughs> but I will spend an inordinate amount of time imagining them dying and, 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 and being like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> because I think when you, when you detox from sugar and you start working out, I, I did the treadmill the other day. You got to up your levels of compassion because when you're a fat slob, it's very easy to just have compassion because you're like, I'm a fat slob and everyone else is a fat slob and I don't care and I don't require anything. But if you're an in shape fit person and you care about yourself, you walk around the world and sometimes you look at people that aren't caring about themselves. And I don't mean necessarily only in looks, but I mean like in any way and you just get angry at them and you're like, these people don't have the level of discipline that I have. And it's very, and it, it makes you angry, you know? That's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of those people that are in shape are like dicks mm. because they're, because they're right. They, you know, I mean, it just is what it is. It's like, so you got to do something that opens up your fucking, you know, ability to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. You don't really do anything to stay in shape. Really. You're no, not just, really in shape. You just thin. No, I just take long walks. Yeah. I just kind of aimlessly wander around. I don't do anything like, on purpose. Do you so. ever see yourself as like a fit guy, like getting in the gym, building uh, it up? I, I just, I hate changing out of clothes to go get sweaty and then have to take a shower right. and get back in regular clothes and all that shit. I hate it. Yeah. I mean, it is a, it is a, it is a whole lifestyle that you have to, like you do have to really just go wholeheartedly into. You have to get addicted to it. You got to get addicted. Yeah. You have to make it where it's like, oh, I feel terrible if I don't, run five miles it's a day. true man and a lot of people do like a lot of people you know if they don't exercise they feel like they they haven't changed their clothes they haven't showered they feel like they haven't brushed their teeth they mm -hmm. feel incomplete you know i want to be one of those people i want to feel like that and i want to have that relationship with my body you know i feel like once i lose weight i'll get cancer i feel like that like once <laughs> once my body once i lose weight I'll immediately get cancer because my body won't know. Like, won't know what's what going if, on? This is how powerful <laughs> sugar is. Sometimes, sh like, sugar will say in my own head, it'll go, I'm the only thing keeping you alive. And I'll believe it. I'll be like, you're probably right. Like, sugar will go, if you get rid of me, you're dead. You're not going to exist anymore. That's how tough it is, man. It's tough to change behavior. It's one of the hardest things in the world to do, mm -hmm. to change your behavior, you know? It's very tough. And that's why people don't succeed at what they want to do is because they're unable to say to themselves, I have to change. And in order, and once I change, I got to kick all these people in my life out that haven't changed. And that's unfortunate, you know? But you got, I mean, you got to do it. It's like when you're a drug addict and you get sober, you don't go to a crack house. Can you imagine that? Imagine a sober guy still hanging out at the crack house. Just looks nice. He's <laughs> got new clothes. Feels good. He just shows up to the crack house. He's like, hey, guys, what are you doing? They're like, we're, we're smoking a rock. That's what we do. And you sit on the couch like, yeah, I remember that. And you're still trying to talk to them as they fucking, they're all cracked out and twitching. And, yeah. You know, you're blending the money. Mm -hmm. You're drinking milk. Just yeah. trying to talk about the weather. Glass of milk. You're like, you guys want to go to a movie? <laughs> they're like, what? No, we want to smoke more crack. We don't want to go to a movie. We don't want to change. You've changed. Now get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Stop showing us what it's like on the other side. That's the thing. Kick them out. The people that aren't changing with you. You know? Folks, we've talked about fucking how important it is because you really got to fuck your way into a better echelon of society. Most of you are not going to be able to do that with your own wits or talent. Fuck your way in there. I'm telling you. Okay. And you got to use Blue Chew because Blue Chew is great. If you like sex, you'll love Blue Chew. It offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom. Wouldn't you like to last longer and go extra rounds? Okay. Fuck your way up. Chewables can work faster than pills. That's what Blue Chew is. It's a chewable with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take it on a full or an empty stomach. Online physician consultation is free, cheaper than those other two, Viagra and Cialis. Okay? Takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician. If you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. 
They want this in your mouth. They want you chewing this blue. Okay? Gives you confidence in bed every time. You and your partner will love it. You got to chew it and do it. I'm telling you. Most of you, you know, some of you out there have nightmare lives. And the way to have a better life is to fuck your way into... And for a lot of you, you're not fucking your way into fucking the Rothschild. But maybe you just fuck your way into somebody that has a, has a house, you know, 20 minutes outside of Cleveland. You know, I mean, that's all most of you are going to get. But who gives a shit? You throw the dick to a girl who inherit, you know, she inherited a little shitty house. Maybe a little shitty uh, barn in upstate New York. You can live in that. Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter, folks. Just sling that dick with confidence. You don't know who you'll end up with. Some chick whose grandmother's about to fucking stroke out and leave her a Mitsubishi Gallant. You and her could live in it and smoke glass. I don't know. It's different for everybody. But if you don't fuck her good, you ain't getting that shit. Okay? Fuck your way into something. We got a great deal. Bluetooth.com. Get your first order free when you use promo code TD. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code T-D. Easy. Goodbye. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. Marianne Williamson, man, she's hip to all this shit. She gets it. She fucking gets it, man. Marianne Williamson is fun to watch because I like, I like the archetype of woman that she is is somebody that I've met over and over again in my life. It's the mom who lets you smoke pot in her mm-hmm. house. Yeah. But she'll also corner you and tell you about a ghost that she dated for <laughs> a summer. You know, it's the mom that'll talk about her spirit guides, you know, while she sells you weed. That's the mom. Yeah. She just gets fucked up. And when she's having a good day, she's talking about spirits and. You know, but when she's having a bad day, man, she's just spitting and cursing. Marianne Williamson, when she's having a bad day, is just walking around a beach screaming at seagulls, <laughs> screaming at birds. Because that's the other side of spirituality. People don't realize that. But once you're really open mm-hmm. and you're letting everything in and you're having the full range of human experiences, once you really start to do that, uh, there's also some real darkness that comes along with that, as there should be. And, you know, we haven't seen that out of Marianne Williamson, but I would certainly like to. Oh, I'd love to. I would love to see her just smoking crack, (laughs) you know? She is interesting, though. She seems like if she was president and, like, Mercury was in retrograde, she'd give everybody, like, paid vacation time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, we all get the month off. She'd have an astrology-based foreign policy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And good for her, man. I'm with it. I'm with rich white bitches. Talking nonsense. And I've always been with that. It's fun. They're fun to be around high. It's fun to be around people that have never set foot on planet Earth. It is so fun to be around people that have never set foot on planet Earth. They have no fucking idea of what they're talking about. Yeah. There was a great Woody Allen movie called Everybody Says I Love You. And it's a musical. And uh, Goldie Hawn plays this, you know, Upper East Side Park Avenue liberal or Upper West Side, wherever they live. They live in this, you know, very wealthy area in Manhattan. And she does. There's this great scene where she's giving a speech to the NYPD. And she's like, these prisoners need to design their own cells with European decorators, you know. And she goes into this whole thing. And then they invite a guy that just gets out of prison to their house for a dinner party. And it's just, it's great. I'm not saying that Marianne Williamson's wrong about a lot of shit. I bet she's right about a lot of, you know, she's talking about dark psychic forces and everything like that. Sure. But this Manichaean sense of good and evil that we need to shove everything into is terribly childish, you know? This is like Lord of the Rings stuff. This isn't a, a, a rational way to approach the problems that we have. Mm-hmm. By her being like, there's a dark psychic force coming from the red states and the blue <laughs> states need to harness the power of the crystal. It's like, no, bitch. What we need to do is figure out what to do with the 60% of the workforce. It's going to be fucking irrelevant mm-hmm. very soon. These problems are larger than just the reactions to them. Okay? It's not just about psychic forces and good and evil. It's not the never-ending story. 
This is a, a com- there's complex issues that, that where the answers are not inherently political. I don't believe that. I believe the answers are going to be maybe they're going to come out of the tech space or they're going to come with new technology or they're going to come with, you know, I, I don't believe that somebody in Washington is going to be like, well, I figured it out. Because if you look at all the advancements and all the things that have changed your life, a lot of them have been not political. They've been technological. They've been, you know, cultural. So I understand what Williamson is saying. She's like, let's not focus on these policy wonks. As she said in the debate, you know, because Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are, 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 are very, you know, committed to plans and proposals, which is all necessary. And when what Marianne Williamson is saying is like, hey, man, it's about more than that. She's right. But what's not about is drawing a line around a group of people and saying they're a dark psychic force. Mm-hmm. It's just not helpful. It's not helpful, Marianne. Mm-hmm. You know, I know what you're trying to do. She's like the racism and the bigotry. This is a drunk white chick at a party whose husband goes, haven't you had enough? And she's like, no, the racism and the bigotry. She goes, I was a dancer. I was a dancer as a girl. When I danced, people said I was like a bird on the stage. They go, (laughs) Marianne, Marianne, honey, why don't you eat something? And she goes, I'm not hungry. There's so much racism and bigotry. There's a dark psychic force coming. And we need to fight it with the energy and the water. I keep telling my husband about the energy, you know, and he's got to he's yeah. got to look at his daughter and go, listen, your mother's a psychopath. You know, <laughs> she loves you, but she's mentally ill. <laughs> and and Marion, that's why, you know, the millennials love her and younger people love her because she's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. That's why we like Trump, because he's fun. People that have real ideas to solving our problems now, we don't even pay attention to them. Yes. We're like, oh. Gay. <laughs> we kind of just want because it's an acceptance of, and I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna spend a minute on this, folks, though, because I know people get upset. But it's an acceptance of we know we're at the end now. We know that whatever's coming next will not be human. Right. We're good. Whatever's coming next will be post human. This is the last dance of humanity. So we're just bringing in the characters, yeah. sending the clowns, you know. And I'm all <laughs> for that. This is the last stand that we're making. Let's have fun. Let's have it be entertaining. Right. Have her win. I hope she wins. I hope she wins. And there's a seance in the Oval Office and everybody's got Harry Potter wands and we're all waving them at each other. Who gives a fuck? (laughs) We're in too deep. Math is not getting us out of this, potentially. Who cares? Yeah. I'm all for her, man. I love that archetype of person. A white, uh, privileged woman who's full of shit. I've gotten a lot of great drugs from these women. They have the best pills. They got good fucking drugs. And they care about everybody, except they don't want anyone in their yard or home. You know? I These racism and bigotry. Two poached eggs, please. Josefina. <laughs> Two poached eggs. Make sure they're properly poached this time. I don't want to have to hit you again. <laughs> The racism and the bigotry. She was talking about Flint and she was talking about the other place. I forget where she lived. She's like, what happened in Flint would not have happened in my neighborhood, which is true and tragic, but it was just funny. Just this recognition, you know? Right. What happened in Flint? We need to change things. I'm like, we do. We absolutely do. And Flint is a fucking disaster. Um, but I'm all for it, man. Bring her on. Yeah. Is it helpful that she's says, you know, half of the country's demons? Probably not. But who gives a fuck? <laughs> That's that Hillary deplorables thing. Yeah. I mean, Trump's the president. Do whatever you have to do to get get rid of him. I think there's there's something to what she's saying. Is this is Manichaean sense of good and evil? Everybody wants to be fighting a war. I don't know why. Everybody now can't find meaning in anything except combat. That's an interesting thing to think about. Why can't anyone find any meaning unless it's combative, unless you're beating someone else? It's not about you. It's not about individualism. That's what we talked about before. It's not about, you know, you do, you know, only, you only, the only person you're fighting is yourself. 
You know, you got to beat the record that you set. It's none of that. It's none of that. We've destroyed that. Everything's about we've got to combat something. There's some outside influence that we need to fight. Every part of life is now political, which is what leads you to totalitarianism, by the way. Because if everything is political, uh, what then happens is you have this, you know, population of people that's completely incapable of seeing anything outside of the lens of politics. And then you lead yourself pretty quickly to a situation where you have a, a, the state, you know, with his boot on your neck and everything, whether it's art or everything in the public sphere, everything is message driven. They're all political messages and it's fucking creepy, man. It becomes mm-hmm. North Korea. It's like nobody wants to live in that. You look at every movie review, every album, everything. Everybody's trying to inject politics into everything. People don't know where this goes. They don't know where it leads. You know? Yeah. I think it just leads to a place where the public sphere is just polluted with these empty political messages that suck. You know? That's okay. Because I'll just be smoking crack at Marianne Williams <laughs> and OJ. <laughs> Why are these people in our lives? Why is O.J. Simpson in our lives? Is he here to teach us something? Seriously. It's a fa- he's a fascinating person. I want to get him on the show. And I know a lot of people will be mad at me. But the people that will be mad at me for having him on the show will be people that are mad that he killed a woman. They don't care about Ron Goldman. They don't give a shit. No. If he only killed Ron Goldman, he'd have a show right now on VH1. Okay? But because he killed his wife, all the female comics that, that have kind of yelled at me for tweeting about him yeah. will be angry that he's on the show. No okay? one cares about the Jewish man. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah. I'll tell you this, folks. Uh, everybody in Edinburgh right now bombing. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big supporter of people taking their horrible acts and inflicting them <laughs> on another country. I'm a huge a supporter dream. of that. Um, and spending an inordinate amount of money to bomb for 30 days straight in the Scottish Highlands. Good for you. They don't cover any of the expenses no, to go? not when you're a loser. <laughs> um, and I'm not talking to established people that are, you know, killing it over there. I'm talking to, you know, the people that think it's a good idea because they've been bombing in New York and L.A. They think maybe it's a good idea to go perform on the moor in Scotland. That's going to change everything. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Okay had enough <laughs> British comedy is different you're you know they have a one-man show they want a story arc it's not just stand-up they want an arc they want it to say something beginning middle and an end they want it to have you know infrastructure like a show I one of the best clubs I ever performed in was the stand in Glasgow Scotland because it's a theater comedy there has its basis in theater comedy in America has its basis in circuses depression era tent carnivals and then eventually mafia-owned lounges and nightclubs. Stand-up comedy was kind of invented by the mafia, you know? Just another thing to put in in the lounge while people were drinking. So America's more rough and tumble. The jokes are shorter. It's in and out. Britain, you get more space. and they'll, they'll, they, There's long periods without laughter, mm. and people are really into that, you know? Which I kind of appreciate to an extent. I like the way that we do it here personally, but I can appreciate the way that they do it there too. Uh, and when you go to the stand in Glasgow, there's no drink service in the room. Hmm. So the, the host will come on for 20 minutes. Then you go up and you do 20. Host will come back on and do another 15, 20. And then somebody else comes up. Host will come back on. And then if you're headlining, you'll go up. But the show's like two hours long. And they, there's 50 intermissions after each act. People go drink at the bar. Then they come back. So their full attention is is on you. Uh. you know, I'm in San Diego and I'm performing last night. And I hear people going like, why does that have cranberry in it? Is that cranberry? And I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm up here trying to do something. Mm-hmm. Can you shut up? But that's, you know, we're in the United States. So I'm kind of a fan of the idea of you go get hammered and then just sit the fuck down with your drinks and watch the show. Yeah, I like that. You know, there's something really I like about that. And there's something interesting about it. But. It would just feel like a freedom being taken away from Americans, though. If they were, if that was to happen here, well, we'd be pe- like upset by that. You know? Yeah, people have panic attacks if the waiter doesn't come to their table mm-hmm. because people need to know that a chicken finger 
will be delivered to their mouth. Or unless they'll have a panic attack. They won't be able to concentrate if their blood sugar is dropping. They want to know that they can get a chicken finger in their mouth and they need to get some booze, you know? Mm -hmm. It all goes back, man. Rugged individualism. If you, I, I, I mean, I, I, some people that listen to this show, I'm so proud of the way they live their lives. I, I Sometimes I follow them back on Instagram and I see them and they've only got a few pictures up and it's just them and their cat or them in the woods with a gun. And I say, I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud that they've accepted that life is solitary and that they really should be accountable only to themselves. And I'm very proud of them. Sometimes people that follow me have these large groups of friends and they're always going on vacation and I see through that. I know what it is. Stop it. Be like the man with three photos, one of an emaciated cat and one of him in the woods with a gun and the quote, I'm ready. I don't know what he's ready for, but it says I'm ready. It's probably, I don't know, you know, but that to me, you know, just a nice quote that says I'm ready. Just a guy in the, in the woods with a gun. He's just waiting. <laughs> Wix, 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 Wix. Fucking get a website, losers. With Wix, you can start from scratch. Choose over 500 stunning templates. It has the most innovative drag and drop website builder. So you can easily customize your site and add text, images, videos, whatever you want. You can even build your site using Wix ADI, artificial design intelligence. A few simple questions. All That's all you need. You can answer them. And then you and your business and Wix will create a stunning website for you. No, you or your business are who the questions are about. You will not create the website. The robot alien AI will create the website. You just sit on your fat ass and put all the work into the business. Okay? We built Tim Dillon's going to hell.com using Wix. It was so easy to do. T-I-M Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N-S going to hell.com. And if the producers that I work with built it, it's easy because they are brain dead crack addicts. So if those people are able to build a website, let me tell you right now, you will too. So if you have business or content you want to promote, you need a professional website. Okay. If anyone that I, everyone that I've worked with in this business has been dumber than the last person I've worked with in this business. Okay. If I had anybody that could support me in the way that I needed to be, I'd be Kevin fucking hard. But the reason I'm not is because I'm literally always dealing with mongoloids, literal mongoloids. And I know you're not supposed to say that anymore, but that's fucking what these people are. They are dead eyed retards that look like they're on a steady diet of paint chips and Flint water. And they fucking barely make sounds. They bark like a sea lion. They're, and they're on drugs and the drugs are the only thing to keep them kind of sane, you know, because their minds are melted. They're, they're stupid people. Okay, they're pointless cretins. Nobody uses that word enough. Cretins. They're carnival barkers. Okay, they're dog people. Not in like they like dogs. Like they are dogs. They're dumber than dogs. All of the people in the business that I've worked with, you know. So if they can build a site using Wix, you can too. And if you click the link at the bottom of Tim Dillon's going to hell dot com, D I L L O N S going to hell dot com. Wix will give you 10% off any premium plan. And by the way, I, I messaged all you fuckers that I said, would you like to come on? You know, none of you messaged me about promoting your shit on Wix. I'm about promoting your shit on the show. You, you know, I guess you lost interest in it. That's totally fine. But, or, or you didn't lose interest in it, whatever it was. I'm telling you right now, you got your premium plans upgraded. I said I was going to give you three minutes. I still will give you three minutes. If you contact me, we'll set it up. But I know one of you, one of you guys, you're like a band. You're on tour. Listen, I don't give a fuck. So, you know, figure it out, okay? Wix. Wix, you can, anyone can build a website using Wix. Even people that should legally not have a business. Even they, did they refill, Ben, that, did they give me another Rice Krispie treat in that little, little thing? Or no? Okay. Go to Wix, folks. Cut the shit. We were in like the weird calm before the storm, you know, because there's not going to be a storm. There is no war. You know, the world will end in a very like it'll be just be long and drawn out. Mm -hmm. Things will just get worse and worse and worse little by little. Trump know? gets elected again. You think he starts a war? Mm. It's hard to say. 
if he starts a war or not. I mean, John Bolton's in there really trying to push Iran. The neocon, the neocons never really gave up power. They just morph. And by the way, neocon, neoliberal, it's all the same thing. It's just war profiteers. That's who they are. Mm-hmm. So when Bush left the office, they grabbed John Brennan and they grabbed, you know, people that were influential in the CIA and people that were influential in the Defense Department. And they pushed, you know, th- what they always push, eternal conflict. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and then Obama's out. Now Trump's in. So they start sending in people and they have Kushner's ear because Kushner's probably a little bit more sympathetic to some of their causes than Trump. So, and he just may be, I guess, you know, somewhat more agreeable than Trump as a personality. So they're, they're kind of going at Ivanka, going at Jared. Um, and, you know, John Bolton is in there. There are people in there that are, they just want more war and more war. And that seems to be, and, and again, a lot of it is, these are people whose bottom line is, you know, affected greatly by how much conflict there is on this planet. Mm -hmm. So the more that there is, the more money that they make. And so in order to justify that in their own heads, and I've spoke to some of these people, they tend to believe that without America inserting itself into every problem, the world would be much worse off. And that's where they all go to sleep at night by saying we're the American empire. These people don't have the self-awareness. Like you'd almost imagine that they'd be like yucking it up. Like, I can't believe it. We got ourselves in another war. Like that's not the way they believe. They actually believe very much in after the fall of the Soviet Union, they believe that America being the only superpower has a responsibility to impose, you know, you know, law on the rest of the planet. And, but that law, what that law really is, is protecting American trade routes and protecting uh, future American markets for American goods and services and protecting multinational corporations. You know, we're not talking about law like freedom of speech and freedom of association mm-hmm. at, in the rule of law and things like that that are all, you know, uh, a positive to try to introduce into a society. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the ability of American businesses and multinational corporations to do whatever the fuck they want, which is why they all hate these countries that don't allow that. Russia, North Korea. I mean, obviously, Mm -hmm. North Korea is a contemptible state. Russia does a lot of fucked up things. But the reason that we like Saudi Arabia, for example, they're our pals. They come for the barbecue. There's Prince Bandar eating Q with the bushes. <laughs> this pork is so tender. They are lobbing the heads off of gay people over there. Mm-hmm. They're chopping off hands. They're beating women with sticks. And we don't care. And their leaders come over here to have a hoedown. They're having a hoedown with the bushes. But we look at Vladimir Putin like he's Voldemort. And the reason for that is because we're eating with Saudi Arabia. We're making money with them. It is what it is, folks. I'm tired yeah. of explaining. You should know that. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to hate America. I love America. America is a great country. We do, we do, we've done some fucked up shit, but I don't think America is the CIA. I think America is, you know, these retards in San Diego that all bought tickets to come see my show. <laughs> They're eating guacamole and watching seals fuck, you know? I think America is my producer, Ben, you know, good looking but brain dead person who literally walks around doesn't know where he is half the time (laughs) you know he's good looking and stupid is there a better combination to be by the way that's what san diego is good looking stupid people have it all yeah okay because they don't know what they don't know and everything you know being good looking you're connected with your body you're like oh here's my big dick and i'm i'm good looking and blah 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 and you don't have to really think too deeply about anything else because that gets in the way yeah. You know, really does. I mean, we're, I'm very excited to do an episode coming up at the end of August where we're going to teach kids in school how to be popular because many kids are not popular in school and they're, they're, they're therefore going in and shooting these schools up or they're, they're you know, going even worse, joining an improv troupe or something. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to basically put together a... Uh, you know, just a little checklist for kids that are in high school or college to more so high school. College doesn't really matter. High school matters. 
everything you'd be in life will be decided in high school. College really doesn't matter. And I mean, this is another lie. Uh, it's like, oh, the losers in high school become really cool people in college. No. no, that's not the way it works. Losers in high school, for the most part, stay losers their entire lives. And the people that aren't losers in high school, they're like, oh, yeah, but how's your bully doing now? He's the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Okay, but why do we get these? But but it's because, you know, everything's written by the nerds and the losers. Yeah, yeah. So they write all these things where it's like, oh, the ugly girl gets hot and, you know, joins the Peace Corps and falls in love with the guy. Shut up. Doesn't fucking happen. You know, so we're going to teach people. And it's about being an individual. And it's about not giving a fuck about people. And I don't mean not giving a fuck about people. I mean, not caring what people think about you. But you got but you also do have to care what they think about you. It's very interesting. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give a lot of advice. It sounds like double talk, but that's because you're too stupid to understand it. Okay, you kids out there, because it's all about caring and not caring. And if you don't even know what that is, well, then you need to listen to the episode. Were you popular in high school? Yeah, I was a decent okay, amount. Okay, the answer yeah. is no. <laughs> and you don't. And there's nothing wrong with that. I made a great journey. I was unpopular in ninth grade. I started to come out of my shell in tenth grade, eleventh grade. I started, you know, feeling myself. In 12th grade, I was nominated for Homecoming King, and I was one of the most popular people that had ever attended Holy Trinity Diocese in high school in Hicksville, Long Island, New York, right where Billy Joel wrote that song, The Village Green. It's right about where I went to high school. Remember those days hanging out by the Village Green? Yeah, we do, because they were phenomenal. And uh, what I learned, I learned a lot of lessons about popularity, and that, number one, it's the most important thing on Earth, mm -hmm. okay? It is more important than honor, uh, character, uh, love, it is the most important thing. Having other people like you is literally everything. If everyone hates you, <laughs> you can be the most honorable person in the world. When you die, history is just going to say that you were a pedophile and that you beat your wife because everyone hated you. So don't be a dick. Don't be a dick when things are going bad. A lot of people, when things are going bad in their career, they're a dick. And then when, I'm sorry, when things are going good in their career, they're a dick. And then when things turn around and they start to go bad, then they're like, well, you know, I just, I'm really grateful and I really love everyone. And I love the community. And it's like, well, you didn't really feel that way when you were doing well. Right. But then it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. And now you're back giving everybody hugs. Everybody sees through that. Mm -hmm. So don't be one of those people. If you're going to be a dick, be a dick. All I respect people that are pieces of shit the whole way through. Yeah. Things are good. Things are bad. They're dicks. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite people in the world have tortured me in and out mercilessly. Okay. They're dicks. Things went well. They were dicks. My, one of my old bosses, who I love, things were good. He was a dick. You did well. He was a dick. You did bad. He was a dick. He was always a dick. Okay? And you got used to that because he wouldn't give you an inch. I respect people like that. What I don't respect is people who like, you know, turn it on, turn on the nice when they're, you know, flailing around, barely able to survive. Their head's above water, barely. They're drowning, except their mouth can stick out of the ocean and they can take breaths and go. <gasps> and then apparently then somebody swims next to them and then they're nice. Then they're nice. Hey, is there room in your raft? But when they're doing well and they're cutting through the water and they're swimming and they got it. If somebody comes near them, like, get the fuck away from me. Be like that all the time. You know? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the reality. I'm nice to people all the time. I care about people. <laughs> I do. See, why, why are you laughing? I'm nice to people. I'm very nice to people. You are. You are. I'm not a dick to people. I just don't. What I don't see. Here's what I get. To, this is why people think I'm not nice. I don't tolerate people's mental illness. Like I won't. Like if somebody's telling me they're doing something and they're not doing it, I'll be like, I don't I don't find that to be the case. Like I had somebody the other day took me out to dinner and goes, well, not took me out, but we were having dinner and they go, do you think I'm on the right track uh, in comedy? And I went, no, no. So now that's a dick thing, right? That's mm -hmm. dick. In, but I view it as being actually nice to the person because they're not on the right track. And if I was telling them that they were on the right track, that would be me kind of then, then in five years when nothing's worked out, that person should have the right to come back to me and hit me with a bat. They should be able to be like, well, you told me I was on the right track. Right. And I was very honest with the person. I'm like, no, you don't have really anything going on social media wise. You're not really trying. You don't have a podcast. Like all the ways that people are finding people, you're not doing any of that shit. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. And, and but it's jarring for him to hear because his face like he didn't expect that answer. 
He expected me because everyone else is like, yeah, man, you know, you're doing it. You're doing it. I'm doing it. No, you're not. Not doing anything. Somebody's got to tell you that. People have to tell you reality. You're being nice by saving them time, basically. He asked me. Yeah. I wouldn't go up to and tell him that out of nowhere, although I have probably. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I have. But I wouldn't tell him if he didn't ask me because I've been told that. People have told me you're not as good as you think you are. You got to wait. You, this opportunity you think you want, you don't want to wait. You got to wait. It's never a nice thing to hear. It's always a hard thing to hear. But if you cannot hear hard shit, you're not going to get anywhere. People's inability to take criticism is one of the reasons that they don't progress because you need to be able to just kind of swallow it, take the criticism and go, okay, yeah, I agree with some of that. I don't agree with it. But just the exercise and like taking the feedback, taking the rejection, taking whatever it is, and then going, okay, I'm going to go to the next level is what it is. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to be right about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a lot of criticism that's not valid if you're trying to get somewhere. And that's okay, too. You know? Let's talk about Monday.com. Uh, many of you out there are running a business. And, um, you know, a lot of those businesses just consist of you selling HGH in an Applebee's parking lot. But some of them require a bit more planning. And for those of you who are having trouble and need business managerial tools, we have Monday.com. Because there's always going to be a Monday, folks. Okay? You got to go in and attack the week. You have a good Monday, you might have a good week. And Monday.com allows you to do all of the things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do on your own. Okay? It takes no, so no time to set up. You can easily customize it, okay? Instead of all the random email spreadsheets, files, whiteboards, to-do lists, all that bullshit, Monday.com is suitable for any size team, from a couple of freelancers to thousands of people communi communicating and collaborating across the globe. So check out Monday.com. It's an amazing team management tool. I still don't know. I mean, I've been reading this ad now for a few minutes. I still don't know what this is. I still don't have any clue. I imagine. I mean, I don't know, but I imagine it's some to do. I have to know what something is if I advertise it. Who cares? Doesn't matter. It's a tool that you need. It's a, it's software. And what it allows you to do is collaborate and to communicate and it facilitates a lot of what's going on out there because there's a lot of problems in the corporate space. There's a lot of waste. There's a lot of unnecessary mumbo jumbo. People running their, you know, flapping their gums, running their mouth. There's a lot. Of, you got to go paperless. There's a lot of paper, post-it notes. You know, you got a home office, a bunch of post-it notes. And where's the cat? Who knows? Buried under paper. Got an old, you know, fax machine with somebody's sweater on it. Hasn't been used in eight years. You know, you got a tingling in your hand. You don't know if it's MS or not. The point is this. You got to go to Monday.com. It streamlines it all. It allows you to be a real businessman. You're going to be a big man or woman. You're going to be a big man or woman. And you have a business. You have a business. Maybe it's not in an office. Maybe it's, uh, you know, in your house. You have a business. And you, you go in that room in the back and you got that bottle of liquor that you think nobody knows about, but everybody smells it on your breath. You go in that back room and you have a just a little glass of warmth just to keep it going. And then you get on Monday.com and you do business because you bring home the bacon. The family depends on you. And you got software. You're not, you're not in this alone. You're fighting a good fight. So what? You pushed your wife. She got in your face. You didn't hit her. You were just pushing her away from you in the kitchen. She started screaming in your face because she's always doubted you. 
And she's never supported you at the right time. That's why you need Monday.com. It'll allow you to seamlessly organize all of the disparate elements of your business and make them into one function. Your son does not speak to you, okay? He fears you. He looks at you with a mixture of fear and disgust. And he goes up to his room looking at God only knows what on the internet. You hope one day you don't get a call that, you know, he's been apprehended after, you know, shooting up a dick sporting goods. You don't know, but you wish you, you wish you and the boy could have more quality time, but you can't because you're sitting in your back room, masturbating to torture porn and doing business. Cause you're a business man. You gotta go to monday.com folks slash Tim. Monday.com slash Tim. Okay? Because when you're out with your buddies and you're you're golfing or you're just throwing a few drinks back at the club, you know, you're at the country club and all those other guys, they work for institutional banks because they're suckers. And you went out on your own to day trade and they thought you were mentally ill. But now you've established that you were at the forefront of something very real. And that these brick and mortar offices are going away. Soon we'll all just be working in little pods from our hovels. But it'll be okay. Because we'll have Monday.com. Because you're a business man. That's what you are. You tell all your buddies that work at Bank of America corporate in Charlotte. A couple of guys you went to college with that you're doing just fine. Sitting in your back room drunk. Watching the market. You feel the pulse of the market go through your body. Okay? At least you hope it is. You hope it's not ALS, but you don't know. You played some sports. You don't know what's coming. And if you do get a death sentence like that, it would be freeing because you could just finally go and do all the drugs that you really want to fucking do that you miss. God, you miss those drugs, but you can't do them because you're a businessman. Businessman. I'm a businessman. Monday.com. Slash Tim, I do not know what this product is. I do not know that. I do not know. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't have it, you're going to fucking fail. I just want to smoke crack (laughs) with Marianne Williamson. You know, the confidence of a white girl on cocaine in the suburbs is like nothing you've ever seen. A white chick driving around a A Honda Civic, a white Honda Civic, coked out of her bird, smoking Newports on her cell phone. The confidence level, Mm -hmm. you know, also a very, a very high archetype of person that people don't realize. Fat girl with a very clean car. This is an archetype of person. A lot of fat girls cannot stop shoving food in. They can, they have lost control of their own body. They cannot stop eating. So they make sure that their environments are immaculate. They're very clean. Right. And it, I've had many of these friends, the fat girl with the very clean car. Yeah, it's a total thing. Their car is so immaculately clean. It's like there was never <laughs> food in it. It was like, it doesn't smell like food, but you know that there had to be food. You look at the girl and she's pouring out of the front seat and you go, there's been food. Why doesn't it smell like French fries? Every now and then you would get in my car and you'd see a little perfectly diced tomato that fell off a Mexican pizza. Just a little diced tomato <laughs> sitting there on the dashboard. But you will never see that with the fat girl with a very clean car. You will smell beautiful perfumes. It will be very nice. She'll have maybe track lighting when you sit down. There'll be a pleasant aroma. Even as the car pulls up, you'll be like, wow. Her hair will be neatly back. Her hair will be neatly back, scrunched up in a ponytail. She'll always have new clothes on. You'll get in the car. You'll be, even if it's a shitty little car, it'll be so beautiful and immaculate. And you'll be looking around because you'll you'll look at the girl and you'll expect that there'd be like a, a bucket of fried chicken in the back, you know? But no, maybe, maybe some gum but only in a compartment where gum should be. Right. Okay? Okay? Fat girls never show you themselves eating. Ever. 
but there's there's a lot of this is a specific type of fat girl. This isn't a normal fat girl. This is the fat girl with a clean car. This is a mythological beast that does exist. <laughs> Who drives around Long Island, drives around New Jersey. She always gives everyone rides. Mm -hmm. She always has that car. She'll pick you up and drop you off. She doesn't feel that connected to you. She feels like she's in her own world. She's driving around. She's always got a hot friend. He's like, hi, hi. And that hot friend's a mess. And that, that hot friend is another archetype. The hot girl with the disgusting car. Right. Very hot girl, but there's, you know, empty bottles of perfume and Vials of crack in the back seat and dogs and cats and, you know, Monopoly pieces. And, you know, it's just a mess. She's got a prom dress and 25 pairs of shoes, but not the fat girl, not the fat girl with a clean car. That girl. At the end of the night, she drops you off at your house. You give her a quick kiss. She says, thanks. Good to see you. She's always funny. She's always personable, but not overboard. Not so much. Mm -hmm. There's a type of fat girl that's always, you know, pining for approval. This is not that girl. This is the fat girl with a clean car. It's a, it's a, it's a, this is, you got to really dance on the head of the pin here. <laughs> this is a very specific type of human being. Mm -hmm. And if you have experience with the fat girl in the clean car, you'll never forget it. You'll never forget how fat she was or how clean that car was because both of them are amazing. And she had an interesting type of fat. It was like hard fat. It wasn't gelatinous, like fun fat to play with, like a lava lamp that was constantly rearranging itself. It was a hard shell fat, like someone had poured magic shell on it. <laughs> it was like one of those desserts. You ever see on Instagram a dessert you hit with a spoon and then it opens up and then goo pours out, like yeah. some chocolate goo. That was the body type of the fat girl with a clean car. Just a big, hard shell. And you knew inside there was goodness. It was whipped cream or chocolate ganache. But you couldn't tell. You couldn't smell any food. You never saw any food. <laughs> and she just picked you up and <laughs> dropped you off. Sometimes she didn't even look like she was having fun. She barely spoke. She barely spoke. She would go to the beach with all the other hot girls and stand there. And every now and then you would say something to her. And then she would say something back to you like, yeah, really? That's really all she said. She would go, yeah, really? And then you get back in her beautiful car. That is a person that I miss. And a person I don't know if I'll ever see again. Because we've taken fat and made it into this mainstream thing. And we've made everybody feel good about their bodies. Well, I mean, that's good for people, I guess. But what happens? What happens to the fat girl with the clean car? What happens to that very distinct, very specific human being who said very little and just drove a clean car? Does that person disappear? Do they go extinct? <laughs> I don't know. That's something I wanted to discuss I stand Marion Williams. Oh, let me explain this. I am in a bed uh, <laughs> in a hotel. And we tried to do the podcast upstairs. They have like a pool and everything. But the problem is there's a wedding going on at five and they have to do some work. We're here at the Andaz in San Francisco. Shout out to the Andaz. San really, Diego. San Diego. Right. I'm sorry. San Diego. Um, TimDillonComedy.com for all your needs. For all your needs. Uh, I got a lot of cool dates coming up. Just go to the website. Check it out. I'm putting them all up on Instagram. Good nights, North Carolina, August 22nd to the 24th. I'm back east for some shows in the fall. Um, Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N on Instagram and Twitter. Devin, what's going on? Uh, YouTube.com slash Devin Costa, D-E-V-A-N. I uh, have a podcast on iTunes. Uh, hate that you love it with Devin Costa and Twitter at Devin Costa. You know, folks, I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're like Willy Wonka's grandfather right now. Uncle Joe, he's the best person in that fucking. How much did that movie suck, by the way? 
No, that was kind of fun. I liked Willy Wonka. <laughs> such a silly movie. No, I mean, it was good. I liked Willy Wonka, but I didn't like the message it sent. And the message it sent was that everything's about luck. It's not. Okay? Everything's not about luck. The golden ticket that Charlie happened to get. Because why? Grandpa, Grandpa Joe's like, we're going to go down there and you're going to get one. Then what happened? They didn't want to let Charlie in, right? Why didn't they want to let him in? Do you remember, Ben? Uh, I think he was late. Yeah. Was he late? It was something like that. I, I'm and not... then Grandpa Joe pushed his way in. I think Grandpa Joe only gets up to go inside when he comes back home with a golden ticket, right? Isn't there the moment where he finally gets up to go? I don't know. Somebody, may, somebody don't gets know. Charlie in that factory. <laughs> Candy is so dumb, too. That's the other thing. Candy's stupid. You know? I want to do Willy Wonka and the Timmy, Timmy, Timmy in the ice cream factory, where at the end, and he gives the whole factory to Charlie at the end. Charlie doesn't know anything about running a factory. He's white trash from Britain. Okay? You think he's going to do a good job? You think he knows about margins on chocolate? You fucking goofy freak. No. Sell it to a corporation. You built a fucking brand. You could get some real money. Don't leave it on the fucking table. So giving it some kid. Hello, I'm Charlie. I'm running the factory now. Shut up. Gives people this idea that everything's about luck. It's not about luck. It's about doing whatever you can get away with, folks. <laughs> if you see somebody... Hit him with a stick. And keep on going. <laughs> That's what it's all about. You know? I mean... <laughs> I would vote for the person who got out and said, do what you can get away with. Cheat on your taxes. Cheat on your wife. You live once. Why is OJ Sim... I just want to go back to this. Why would I look in OJ's eyes? Do I see the peace of like just a beautiful lake? A pond? I mean, does anyone else feel this and is confused by it? Is he innocent? Somebody hugged me at my show the other day. They're like, I like that you did a Michael Jackson joke, but you know he innocent. I'm like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Thanks for buying this ticket. Yo, he innocent. You know, when somebody says that, you know what I want to say to them? I want to look right at them and whisper in their ear, hey, don't tell anybody. So is Hitler. He's innocent too. But wouldn't it be good if she was like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>